The bladder is a muscular organ with carefully balanced controls that regulate its size and wall tension. Urine, produced in the kidneys, flows into the bladder through the ureters and leaves the bladder through the urethra. The triangular area formed by these three openings is called the trigone. The bladder muscle, called the detrusor, is relaxed until the bladder fills to half a pint, or 250 milliliters of fluid. The urethral sphincters contract to keep shut against the mounting pressure of urine. There are actually two sphincters, the internal urethral sphincter at the top of the bladder neck, which operates automatically, and the external urethral sphincter, which is under conscious control. As the bladder fills, the walls of the bladder contract, nerve receptors are stimulated, and the micturition reflex is triggered. These four events happen in quick succession. First, the detrusor muscle contracts, resulting in increased pressure within the bladder. The internal sphincter muscle then relaxes, enabling urine to enter the bladder neck and flow into the urethra. Finally, the external sphincter muscle relaxes to release the urine from the urethra and out of the body. This sequential process is controlled by the autonomic nervous system and by you. The autonomic nervous system functions automatically without conscious intervention to keep the body running smoothly. One of its major functions is to control smooth muscles like those in the bladder. It also stimulates the release of hormones. The autonomic nervous system is comprised of two components, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system promotes continence and relays information to the brain about the need to void. The parasympathetic nervous system operates to empty the bladder. Think S, sympathetic, store urine, and P, parasympathetic, well, you get the idea. The sympathetic nervous system uses noradrenaline or norepinephrine as its neurotransmitter or chemical messenger. The parasympathetic nervous system uses acetylcholine. When a nerve impulse reaches the end of a nerve, the nerve releases the chemical, which in turn starts a new impulse in the next nerve in the chain. The chemical neurotransmitter binds to receptors on the receiving end of the signal. Here is how it works in the bladder. When the detrusor is stretched, a sensor in the muscle initiates a signal that says, filling up. The signal is relayed by afferent nerves and neurotransmitters to the spinal cord and brain, where it is interpreted. In response, a command signal is sent back to the bladder that says either hold on or void. This efferent signal is relayed to and acts on various muscles instead of other nerves. If the command is hold on, the sympathetic nervous system releases norepinephrine, which tells the detrusor to relax and the internal sphincter to contract. If the command is to void, the parasympathetic nervous system releases acetylcholine, which relaxes the internal sphincter and contracts the detrusor. Of course, the release of urine from the bladder is not entirely under the control of the autonomic nervous system, which functions unconsciously. The somatic nervous system allows conscious control over one's body by providing innervation to striated voluntary muscles, such as the external sphincter, which encircles the urethra where it passes through the pelvic floor. The external sphincter is consciously relaxed to initiate urination. The lower urinary tract differs in the male and female. In the male, the urethra passes through the prostate gland at the base of the bladder, then out the underside of the penis, and is therefore considerably longer than the female urethra, which exits just anterior to the vaginal opening. The prostate and the difference in length between the male and female urethra make for a substantial difference in urinary function and potential problems. For example, the shorter female urethra allows more frequent infection to ascend into the bladder, while its position anterior to the birth canal and the relative weakness of the external sphincter muscle subjected to frequent weakening after childbirth or menopause. The male urethra, on the other hand, quite frequently becomes constricted by a growing prostate gland and can shut off urine flow altogether.